Today is Saturday the 2nd of December 2023. It's minus 5 out here and I'm stood in my underpants. Today hopefully though is the day of the beginning of the end of my limbo for the last two years. For two years every day, I've been taking two of these Sotolols. Still going to be taking them. Still going to be taking them Eprazol. But hopefully, after Tuesday, I won't have to take these anymore. These are my beta blocker heart control tablets. And I'm about to take my last one. And then I'm going in for my second ablation operation on Tuesday and fingers crossed I won't ever need to take them again obviously when I had the op last year we were hoping that that would be me fixed and it certainly felt like it for a few weeks. I went out on a couple of cycle rides and I was almost back to normal kind of performance, albeit unfit. And then I started getting chest pains. And uh, I phoned the doc and the doc said, well, A, to go back on my tablets and B, that there had been three waveforms in my chest and he'd fixed the most severe of them, but there were two others and they could possibly seize their chance of glory. Huh. Nice pish, son. Thanks for ruining my frosty bido. So that was the case. I've been on the, the Sotolol tablets again for a year, which is kind of like a, an anchor anyway to anything. As soon as your heart gets to a certain level, it just says nope and stops. So you can't do riding up hills very well or running or any other kind of anaerobic sports like, well, use your imagination. It was getting to the point where I'd get a real bad pressure in my chest whenever I started trying to do something. Not worrying pressure, but it just holding you back kind of pressure. So we're really hoping this time that the dock can find where the uh, waveforms are coming from and sh shut them off at source or put a wall around them. And that's what they do. But they have to misbehave while I'm on the operating table and that's the issue because they don't do it all the time. So your heart has four chambers. Deoxygenated blood comes into your atrium here, then goes into your ventricle. Your ventricle pushes it out to your lungs where it gets oxygenated. Then it comes into your left atrium gets pushed into your left ventricle and that goes out to your body all oxygenated and keeps you alive my issue is there's an electrical signal started here in the atrium which tells the ventricle to beat and somewhere here in the middle there's like a wiring loom and it's getting lost there it disappears shorts to the case and then the ventricle doesn't beat, it just sits there and I end up missing beats and feeling like shit. The Sotolol affects the timings of the heart and stops it from missing beats. It keeps it beating steadily, albeit more slowly. The trouble is the fill levels between the, the atrium 
and the ventricle aren't quite right and that's why I feel the pressure here's hoping that that's the end of that this time so yet again I've got to do the trimmy trimmy thing look like a fucking frozen chicken hate it and it goes all prickly and I've got to do downstairs too so the nurses don't have to do it for me Ordinarily, I run really hot. I don't wear a jacket. I'm that guy that you always see out in shorts, even in January when it's minus 14. However, since I've been on these beta blockets, they, they make me feel really cold. It's unusual for me. But since I've been coming off them again, I'm starting to heat up again. And it's messing me up, messing my body up. I feel a little bit weird. In the summer at festivals, the beta blockers have been quite good. When it's 36 to 38 degrees like at Download or Bloodstock last year, then I haven't cooked and died in the heat like I would have in a normal time. But So I'm hoping next year the festivals aren't as hot as they were for the last couple of years. But I don't want rain. Since Saturday, the weather has remained pretty much below freezing the whole time. And just now it's heated up to a whole 0.8 degrees but it keeps hailing and the roads are covered in in hailstones at the moment so I'm kind of bricking myself that we won't get there in the morning uh, we're gonna have to leave at six o'clock in the morning uh, I've got to be in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary for eight o'clock so that's a two-hour journey it normally takes about 90 minutes and hoping we, we actually get there otherwise all this is in vain and that can't happen I'm not allowed to eat after 4 a.m. so I'm gonna have my breakfast now. Fuck's sakes, look at the state of this. Six o'clock in the morning, it's like a fucking ice rink. And we've got 75 miles to Aberdeen to go. Oh well, here we go. Okay. So got here this morning and had to wait in a queue to go in so I didn't go in until nearly lunchtime and uh, I was in there a couple of hours uh, and I wasn't given them any beats so they had to fill me full of adrenaline and basically I had to sit and do leg raises until my heart rate raised enough to start kicking out a few of my erratic ectopic beats and then they were able to map them to a general area but they had to basically guess where it came from so they zapped a few bits and hopefully that's the end of it now but we'll just have to wait and see so now it's uh, I think three o'clock or so and I'm starving and uh, I'm not allowed to sit up. I'll get told off if they see me raising my arm with this phone. Uh, um, and I, I've got a. Uh, well, for more arteries, I've got bandages on them at the moment. And if I sit up, they might rupture and I'll bleed out. So I suppose I better pay attention to that. I'm here until after six, because uh, they won't let me go before then, just to make sure my wounds are okay. I've got to do a lap of the world without them opening up. But that means I get to stay for tea. And we're having haggis cottage pie with meats and dyes. And also um, some uh, rice, not rice, coconut and raspberry sponge cake and custard. Just like school dinners. 4pm breakfast, yay! Forgot to film it, but it was nice. Haggis, cottage pie, neeps, tarties, steam sponge and custard. Yum. 
I'm home, I'm alive, I had my op. Um, when we first got to Aberdeen yesterday, there were overnight patients in the ward, and that's supposed to be a day ward. So it looked for a while like we weren't going to get done at all. But they told me I was third in the queue. Turns out I was second in the queue, the guy that went in before me. So I got in about 12, I presume. Uh, I think, I can't remember. But aye, it was, it was a bit uh, intense at first because the, the poor people were having to play Tetris with beds, moving people left, right and centre. And for, well, we had to sit in a, in a cubicle for a while and then in the corridor and then back into the ward. And even even when I went in for my op, I didn't have a, a ward, uh, a little room to get changed in. I had to get changed in, in the toilet and then come out in my, in my gownie. Uh, and then get taken on a bed through to the the bit where the ladies check your bits and check my bits. They did found them to be unsatisfactory. So there you go. I'm a shite, shite bollock shaver. Uh, the, the lovely nurse there had the most surreal and bizarre conversation with her while she was doing my, my bits. And uh, she's a bike packer. Uh, so we made a real connection and it was just like she wasn't shaving my nuts at all. It was like I'd met someone in the pub and we were getting on famously. You know, kind of surreal. But then I, I went in and on the table, they, they uh, connected me up and everything else, did all the, the usual things. Really cold in that ward. But I was getting um, done and they were looking at my heart and I wasn't giving them any, any erratic beats. My heart was behaving perfectly. It was being normal, so they pumped me through, uh, pumped me full of adrenaline to start off with. Started off with fifteen, then it went up to twenty-five, and then it went up to thirty milligrams of this fancy adrenaline stuff, and my heart was still behaving perfectly, just sods lower. So they said to me, "When does it misbehave?" And I said, "Normally when I'm doing exercise." So. Turned out I had to end up doing leg raises because you can't move your back because your back's covered in these cold stickers which map exactly to sensors and, and x-rays on, on, the, on the bed. So you can't move your back. So yeah, I was doing leg raises. I ended up raising my legs loads and loads of times until I was proper out of breath. And, and uh, yeah, I managed to give them three erratic beats in the whole time I was there. But they did manage to record them, but they couldn't map exactly where they were. They could only get within 96, 97% of where they were. So what they've done is they've ablated around where they think that my issue was on this occasion. And we're just hoping that it's made a difference. If it hasn't scored a bullseye, what it'll do is it'll change what they call the payload, so the 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 amount of of um, ectopic beats and how effective they are on my fill levels and everything else in my heart will will change hopefully. So fingers crossed, that's it. If it isn't, then uh, I'm going to have to get a lot worse before they're able to fix me because they can't fix me if my heart doesn't mess up on the table. It's like my job. People say to me, I've got this problem with my computer and I go and try to fix a computer and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing I can do. So the poor doc's got the same issue with me. I'm going to have to get a lot worse before I get better. But I'm back. I'm off the drugs. I feel pretty good. So fingers crossed. That's me now. And uh, yeah, I've got my, my wounds that are... Uh, still there in my femoral veins yeah, I'm not allowed to shower for two days and I'm not allowed to do anything strenuous can't drive for a few days certainly can't do any exercise or anything for about 10 days just in case they rip open and they'll bleed out on the puddle on the floor be a big puddle right now anyway 
hope that's it. If you watch this far, thank you very much for watching. And we'll find out in coming videos if it's worked or not. It could be like three months before we find out for sure if it's worked. But uh, I should be back to doing things in about 10 days. And if I'm okay, I'm going to start planning big proper adventures again. Anyway, cheers. Bye-bye Oh, that's a serious. Into the hospital for my fucking knee now.